Basic intro to myself, who I am. My name is Neil Percy, as Ashley said. Um, I spoke in the last WordCamp last year. Um, who, who heard my talk last year with regards to uh, Yoast? Okay. Last year, I just basically chatted about Yoast SEO. Who knows what Yoast SEO is? Okay, so you all pretty half, half of you about understand what Yoast is and you're pretty much using it. Uh, Yoast takes care of all the on-site optimization um, of your WordPress blog or website. Uh, so it was more of an on-site perspective. Uh, this year, also more of a following on front and now going into community, Google's taking a big look into how our community affects SEO. I don't think they've yet figured it out, um, but it is a process. All right, so firstly, correlation data. There's correlation data and there's causation data when it comes to SEO. And if you, at the back, can you see this? Yeah, you know? No. Okay, basically in summary at the top you've got, firstly correlation data is just because you're ranking number one, it uh, doesn't mean to say that at the top there you've got Facebook shares, uh, Facebook total, and Facebook comments. It doesn't mean to say that because you're ranking number one is because of that. But the correlation says that those that are ranking number one have a lot of Facebook shares, have Facebook uh, total comments, likes, and obviously Twitter as well. So that's correlation. Causation would be, is Facebook actually affecting the ranking? Okay, so you have to understand there's two different aspects to it. And then further down the list, you've got backlinks, um, no follows, uh, further down, backlinks with keywords, backlinks with stop words, image counts, keyword in URL, keyword in description, and then it's getting less and less important, and then word count right at the bottom. So as you can see, social media is at the top, and then second from the top is number of backlinks. So obviously backlinks are still very important, and definitely that's causation, not correlation. That's a definite. All right, so the Googling uh, uh, Rand Fishkin of SEO models. Anyone heard of SEO models? SEO models is pretty much the thought leader when it comes to SEO and, and the global standpoint. And Rand Fishkin heads that up. And he ran a test just under a year ago, um, a Google Plus experiment, asking his community, of which is really big. So you must understand that he's got thousands of followers. So he's already got a one up on all of us in this room. He asked his community to plus one that post within Google Plus, which was currently ranking 16th for the keyword uh, vintage scooter helmet. After which, I think about there was about three or two, about 290 odd pluses and 115 comments. That then ranked sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So that worked. Um, there's been other cases where it hasn't worked. And after trialing the net and looking for these sort of experiments, there's not, a, there's not a lot of them around. So again, this is just it's one aspect. And Google, you'll see over time, experiments with things. They will, they will look into something, and maybe there's just coincidence that this worked. Uh, but again, you, you can't ignore it. All right, so what are the, the experts, some of the experts saying? around uh, the Google Plus, how it's affecting social media. You can read this in your own time. We'll have, obviously have the slideshow uh, afterwards uh, loaded up onto the WordCamp site. But basically, in a nutshell, they all agree that Google Plus is something that you can't ignore. Google themselves haven't really got it right yet uh, in terms of uh, ranking, because there are ways, I mean, you can buy pluses. You can, you can go to a website and buy 100 pluses for $5. So what sort of authority does that carry? So Google's trying to figure out authority. That's what they're busy trying to do is author rank. There's something called author rank now, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. Google Webmaster Tools, this is when I kind of thought, well, you know, there's Google Plus and there's, and there's, and there's Facebook and there's Twitter. Um, but when Google launched this in Google Webmaster Tools, anyone is how many people are familiar with Google Webmaster Tools? Okay, so a fair number. Uh, Google launched this, and this is basically taking um, your Google Plus profile. So if you connect your Google Plus profile uh, to all your blog posts, and then you'll see, um, I think it's in, a, yeah, it's in a slide coming up, 
uh, that when you're blogging something and it indexes in Google, your little thumbnail appears within the search results. How many people have a thumbnail, have corresponded their Google Plus, page, Google Plus profile to their blogging author page? Okay, not me. That, if it's, if it's a one thing you need to take away from today, is setting that up. And we've got a plugin that you can use, um, or you could just develop it yourself if, you, if you're technical. But basically, Google is now tracking your amount of shares, um, how many clicks, sorry, not the amount of shares, I'll take it back. The amount of clicks, uh, your click-through rate, and your average position within Google Webmaster Tools. So they're using your author profile. And the fact that they're doing that in Google Webmaster Tools, surely that has to play a part. If not now, maybe in the future. So sign in if you haven't already. Sign up with Google Webmaster Tools. Link up your uh, Google Profile Plus page to your author profile page within your blog, your WordPress blog. And, and then obviously connect it within Google Webmaster Tools and you'll start seeing this sort of report. It's nice to, to track. And then Google Analytics has started incorporating social into Google Analytics. So where's, how much traffic are you getting from Facebook? How much traffic are you getting from Twitter? On that note, um, just so you know, I, who knows what a nofollow is when you link and it's a nofollow? Not many. Right. So nofollow is basically, um, if, there's, if you have a link within your website, you tag it in a very, you know, that's a basic understanding of it, but you tag that link so the Google bot doesn't follow that link. Naturally, from a user end, you can actually click on it and it all works, but the bot doesn't follow that link and doesn't go onto the next page. Facebook has a no follow on all their links going out. Twitter and Google Plus, Google bots can follow. So again, how does Facebook, because Facebook doesn't allow Google to index those links, so we can, from that side, from a no-follow perspective, how does that all incorporate into SEO? It's all these little things you need to keep in mind. Um, I don't have all the answers as yet. Uh, a lot of SEOs don't, so it's, it's all, it's a massive part that you always, always, all have to like, understand. There's over 200 algorithms. Uh, social media is obviously uh, becoming a factor as to how big that is. But, yeah, we're still figuring that out. Um, and then Google Analytics, this is a, a very important graph. If you've got, I'm sure most of you are plugged into Google Analytics, do a filter uh, with an analytics of not provided searches. So not provided uh, basically is if you're logged into Google, um, Google's not, not tracking those keywords when you're searching. So if you're searching for accommodation Cape Town and you're logged into Google like I am there, um, Google won't reveal that search term within Google Analytics. Okay. Um, and and that's, that was launched in the beginning of March. And you can see this was a, this website, um, the target audience is female. I'd say 90% of the users are female. So you can see how that profile has grown, that, that, that traffic has grown. That's one over there, the smaller graph, uh, that was mostly male. And that from the outset was quite high and has, has gradually increased, but it hasn't been as dramatic as the, the female audience. And when Google Plus was launched, most of uh, the, the people registered within Google Plus were male. I think it was about 80-20. That obviously has come down. So it's good to see how many people are actually searching, not provided, because if they're not provided, they log into Google, they potentially might have a Google Plus profile. So when you log into Google, you'll see a different if I'm logged into Google uh, and I do a search, I'll see a different result to what you do because you've got personalized search results now. So how does that community, and again, it comes down to what Fred said, how do you build a community? Obviously, we're only talking from a Google perspective, but it has a factor because if you've got a bigger community, you're obviously going to be ranking higher from those personalized uh, search results. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a case study, a Facebook case study from our friends at uh, Web SEO, uh, Dale Coombs. Basically, the top graph is analytical uh, search term, uh, keyword search terms within Google Analytics. And over here, you've got uh, the actual growth within Facebook likes. 
there is a correlation there. There's a lot of other aspects you need to understand here that, that, that goes into it. You can't say, okay, well, this is a graph and say, well, there's a definite uh, correlation. And maybe, obviously, then Facebook is contributing to the, the traffic, which is organic traffic. It could be because, well, they're generating likes, so what is their content strategy like? Are they getting incoming links from their website? But if, you're, if your Facebook likes are increasing and you're pushing content through, you're building your awareness, you're building your community, are other people talking about it um, off Facebook contributing to incoming links? Does that make sense? All good. All right, another Facebook study, and we'll also touch on a little bit later with regards to plugins, but Facebook Open Graph is becoming increasingly important from a viral perspective, all right? So not just, I'm not thinking, I don't have my SEO hat on now, I'm just talking viral. If you've got content um, that you're pushing out on a weekly, daily basis, you need to have the Facebook Open Graph implemented. Uh, so when you click like, um, it basically shows a thumbnail within your, your Facebook feed, the thumbnail of that, that's pulling an image from that post with a description, a nice description, and the title. You can all control that within WordPress if the Facebook open graph um, is implemented properly. Uh, just an FYI, just take a note to check that if your, if your website is implemented correctly. Just Google Facebook debugger. Uh, there, they'll give you a, a field where you can just submit your your blog post into and I'll tell you what the errors are on that blog post in terms of open graph. So getting back to this graph, obviously that's when we implemented it and traffic started increasing. There was an increase uh, where we're at, middle of June towards the end of June. From an organic perspective, the traffic increased prior to that. So now when I look at that graph, I'm like, well, is it because the fact that that it was optimized correctly, this is where the correlation comes in. Was it because it was optimized correctly, which led to more likes, which led to a viral spread within, within Facebook, which led to obviously traffic, incoming traffic. And over time, obviously, there has been a slight increase in traffic um, over the three, four month period. So again, if, you like, if, if, if your Facebook open graph is set up correctly, it's gonna go viral, People are going to talk about your web, your company, your blog, on the on Facebook, maybe on their own blog, which will increase links, backlinks to your website, which will improve your ranking. So Google authorship is what I spoke about earlier. So that's that's my example of a a, pro, a Google Plus profile indexed uh, in in Google. So we use um, a cheap way, effective way is, is the plugin authorship, Authorship, sorry. Oh, that's the next slide, we get into that. So the plugin that you're using is Authorship. Um, and let me, there it is there. So this plugin install, it takes a little bit of uh, CSS and coding to get your uh, icons sorted at the bottom of your author page. You might have to get someone technical to sort that out for you. But that will, if you got that linked up with your Google Plus profile page, uh, you'll start seeing those results within Google. Another plugin that we use is the social slick uh, share button. And once it's installed, you'll have the icons on the, on the left-hand side. As you scroll down the page, you'll see it on the left, and it'll scroll down with you. We find that the most effective way to go to get the, the likes and the sharing. Um, if it's at the bottom of the top, it's not that effective, or as effective as this. And then you've also got reporting within WordPress. So you'll be able to see uh, which posts have been the most effective. And again, Social Slick, uh, the, the plugin, has a section to set up your Facebook open graph. So there I've got my Facebook app ID number that I've inserted in there, which then sorts out that Facebook open graph problem. Right, a interview done by Danny, uh, Danny Sullivan of um, Search Engine Land, or he contributes to Search Engine Land, to Matt Cutts, and Matt Cutts said that links are still, and for the foreseeable uh, future, 
going to be more powerful signal, signal for search rankings than than social. The fact that he uses than, maybe I'm analyzing it too much, but there is the social aspects that they are looking at. And in the previous slide, you did see that Google has created a patent, and that patent is um, it's basically focusing on Google's uh, how do they sort out uh, authorship, the agent ranking, uh, you know, how, how, do, how do they equate the value and the, the authority that I over you have uh, within, within that industry. So you might have a higher authority. So if you like something, if you plus something, that has a higher weight than, say, me who has a less authority, and so forth. So in summary, this was uh, an article written by Jevold Hasselman uh, from eTraffic. And it was, it was quite insightful in that he found these, these pie charts. Uh, and previously, that was, that's like a really bad link profile. You, you're getting a lot of footer links, and, you, and you're doing a lot of comment mark, uh, commenting. But purely from a, from a link perspective, understand what Rian said earlier about commenting um, and how you build up his business and his profile. I actually did the same in 2006, building up my profile, just commenting and ensuring links. But if that's all you have and you don't have the rest, a lot of red flags are going to appear within Google and you're, and you're probably going to get penalized. So do you have links in the sidebar from other websites, um, articles, uh, and your author bio, is your author bio set up? Um, forum post, are you, so it's a whole, you're looking at this thing from an from a holistic perspective, and, and what Rand Fishkin, the, the term that he's coined is, is inbound marketing. So it's not just SEO. SEO, obviously, if your structures are right and, and everything's set up correctly, it will help. But you have to look at community marketing, what, what Fred said earlier. You have to look at how, how many people do you have in your community, how many people are talking about you, using products like Brands Eye to, to track uh, brand mentions, et cetera, et cetera. And that I did in 12 minutes. That's quite impressive. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, question time. We've got some prizes to give out. Uh, Web SEO has sponsored us some SEO vouchers. So somebody put up their hand. Okay, there we go. Let's see what you have to ask. <laughs> Hi, uh, um, Simon Cox from Biggest Leaf. Um, I've used the social share buttons before on websites. Mm -hmm. They float on the right hand side and with laptops and, and tablet PCs I find that they go over the content. Have you found a workaround for this? Well, the, the social slick share button actually fixes that. You can actually set it so that it's offset, say, by 10 pixels off the, the wrapper, as it were, on the, on the left hand side or right hand side. Have you found any other plugins that can do something similar? Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone else? Maybe someone else in the room has found another plugin that could do it. How much? Dig deep. Any other questions? OK, here we go. Hi, Neil. It's Nathaniel speaking. Um, I've been using Yoast as a plugin for WordPress for SEO. Would you recommend that as the best plugin, or is there any other plugin I could use? Uh, from an on-site perspective, yes, definitely. Uh, as I said, I spoke about that last year. So that looks after all your on-site, your title tags, uh, media descriptions, uh, your actual URL string. So definitely, that is, that is your platform that you need. You have to have, well, I advise Yoast. There are others, all-in-one SEO, uh, Platinum SEO. Uh, Yoast is one of the best. And I actually read Mark. I read an article the other day, a press release that you're combining with, with Yoast. Yeah. So WooThemes are actually incorporating that into, into the new themes now going forward. 